Hello there, Scallywag. It is a big day today because we are finally adding a new ancient dragon to a collection. We don't have many of these boys, but we have Homala here as a new ancient that we are going to add to our game. A very, very cool looking egg with coral just growing out of it. Very cool. And for that we do get 300 bonus points because of the season points. But you can see that Homala is an ancient water and light dragon. And so a lot of people before were going, you know, is Homala worth getting? Is it worth using on a team? And I don't really like the split between light and water because it's neither a super aggressive nor a super defensive dragon. But if we use the DML wiki, then when we scroll down we can see that the base health of Hamala is 286 and the base attack is 86, which is actually not too bad. You've got legendaries and things like that that have much lower than both of those stats. So Hamala is not a bad dragon by any stretch of the imagination, but the problem with Hamala is that I already have both light and water on my team, so it's hard to justify leveling up Hamala and adding it to our main squad. Maybe we'll do it. Um, later on after we got all the elements on our team, but Homala ancient water dragon of light rules over the deepest depths of the ocean as a beacon in the darkness It's not supposed to come to the surface, but curiosity always gets the better of it So essentially Homala just got caught um, as it was on its I guess on its daily stroll um, with the trainers, but you can see that Homala has this cool sort of watery effect on its stomach Cute little baby and fits in quite well with this habitat. So I'm actually gonna level up Homala a bit and we're gonna take it in for a few battles because especially for people that didn't really manage to get this dragon or any ancients for that matter because the water ancient event was not the kindest. Uh, it was very unkind in fact so um, I know a lot of people were quite frustrated that they didn't get anything out of it but I do hope that if you wanted to at least see this dragon do at least a little bit of action well, we can do that now. And this is, of course, the adult form of Homala. I don't think it has any special animation with it. I may be wrong, but very cool looking dragon. This is some people's favorite dragon, some people's favorite ancient out of this event. I do quite like Homala. Um, of course, I would have liked Bahajir if I could have gotten him because he's just a big tentacle guy, but we didn't get Oira and we didn't get Momotu, so I am happy that we at least got one Ancient out of this. And so now we've got those two just sitting in that Ancient habitat, which looks nice and comfy. Very comfy. Of course, if you don't have any Ancient Dragons yet, um, initially you're probably going to think that they suck if you can only have two elements unlocked. Because we could go and awaken Homala now, but we'd have to wait a day. And then the light element, we'd have to spend gems to unlock it. But main thing about dragons is just making sure that they've got their level 6 upgrades on their abilities. Because that's the main thing that actually helps them win fights. But I guess it doesn't really matter too much. So let's go and find a level 30-ish fight. Is this around about 30? Yeah. I guess this is around about 30. So yeah, we'll, we'll take this one here. So um... Let's go and take a look at our Homala dragon. Let's throw a couple of divines in there because we never really get to use divines all that much. Um, and we'll throw in another one. Or let's throw in a legendary actually because let's just spice it up. We'll spice it up a little bit. Um, yeah, whatever, we'll throw in our orca. This is a little bit of a mismatched team and Homala's not going to be doing a ton of damage at the moment. But... You know, over time you'll hear people say you probably shouldn't use epics anymore because especially with sigils, now the fact that sigils, if you've got an epic, you can't put legendary sigils on epics and, you know, commons, you can only use common sigils, so commons are really bad these days now. But this sort of team here, like not using these dragons, for example, but say you've got one ancient, you've got one divine and one legendary, the reason why this actually isn't so bad is because then you can actually have nine unique elements on your team. So, for instance, you've got the Orca, which will have three elements, you've got an Ancient that's got three elements, and a Divine with three elements. So nine unique elements, and you can use those in castle events, in, uh, I guess, double trouble battles, because they do have elemental restrictions as well. So... 
even though if we were say talking about a perfect world you would have like well I guess you, you would just have three ancients but if they're the only three dragons that you have it's actually better in some senses to just use lesser powerful divines and legendaries in the other two slots so um I mean it does also depend on the team that you want because I mean some ancients are really good at supporting if it's like a, an ancient earth and water dragon like what is that Momotu that's really good at support he's really not a very aggressive dragon because most of the aggressive elements that you have are reserved that's, that's a level six one but a lot of the aggressive dragons are those with like shadow fire plant mainly i would say having plant and shadow on a team to me is like essential especially plant plant has been so good to me over the years that i think plant is still still busted despite the fact that it has been nerfed a few times now it is it has definitely gone through the ringer of nerfs but it's still good overall especially double plant because that's what i use with andy and my hermes dragon and it has just always worked out well obviously when you go against dragons that resist plant it kind of sucks but you're mostly going to be going against, especially in the arena, mainly ancient legendaries and divines, and they don't have any weaknesses, so it doesn't really matter. But to anyone that is considering what they should use on their team, genuinely, it depends on the dragons, it depends on your team, what, what sort of team comp you want, whether you want to use metal or whether you want to use different things. But I do highly recommend that you choose early on exactly what you want to do with the team. Because it's like Thor, for instance, he's not the best choice for an aggressive dragon. He does have energy, um, but comparing that to the shadow element, shadow is just a lot better at just one-shotting dragons. So if he was going to be your aggressive dragon, I'd probably reconsider it. Now, there are still people out there that are like level, play a level 100 and they still use common dragons. A really common dragon that people use um, to a ridiculously high level is the ceremony dragon, which is why we have so many memes about it. Um, but I don't understand why, because I know that in other games, like say Pokemon for example, it used to work, or it still works, that each individual Pokemon, for instance, has a different value for health, speed, and it just depends on the individual Pokemon. But in DML, outside of exception dragons, so ancients and some divines and very few legendaries, it's actually, the, the stats that your dragon has is based on their elements. So... If you've got a dragon that has super defensive elements, like earth and metal for example, then that dragon has a massive boost to health, and I don't remember what they do to the attack stat exactly, but that's what changes what their base stats are, just what their elements are. And I think a lot of people don't actually know that, and they still use common dragons, which kind of sucks. By the way, Brickon just destroyed us. Let's see if we can find a different combo of dragons to help us through that. Surely we should be able to do it with... Um, do we have like a 32-ish? I guess we'll try you. But I do see a lot of people that don't understand the fact that commons, uncommons, rares, epics, they all have much lower base stats than you know, ancient legendaries and divines. Just their base stats are just a lot lower, which is why you should never use commons on your team. And not just that, again, sigils make commons useless. And along with that, just in general, you'll only have two elements, or in some cases, people just use fire dragons and they only have one element, which is even worse. Whereas if you're using epics or above, you're obviously going to get three elements which you can use on your team instead. So, I would say to anyone that is still using commons, regardless of your player level, 
you need to stop doing it. If you're using rares, you should probably stop doing it. Yes, I get it. They're easier to enchant, because if we go into enchantment here and we pick out a common dragon, for example, Sally. To upgrade Sally to enchantment level 4, look at how easy that is to enchant Sally to enchantment level 4. All it requires is some low-grade um, plant and some relatively low-grade shadow. Super easy to enchant that, whereas if we pick level 4 enchantment for uh, Erlang Shen, we need three of these and they're all excellent greats. So I think the reason a lot of people do it is because they see that to enchant them it's going to take so many more resources and they go, well, I might as well just use a common for ages. But then they get screwed over during the castle events and it's not cool when you're sitting there and you're trying to do a castle event. I should not have clicked on that clan quest, damn it. But when you're trying to, you know, do an event and you just get completely held back because you don't have the elements that you need and it's like you could have just been using an epic instead of a common dragon and you would have been able to do that castle event a lot easier. At the same time, I don't actually recommend if you're going through the maps to level up three dragons equally because it takes forever. The way that I did it when the new portion of the map came out, because you know, initially the map was up to um, Christo, and then it went further, and then it was up to Mini, and then of course we got the update, what was it, last year, that was all the way up to Malice Striker. And I didn't level up three dragons equally to get through this part of the map with the increased dragon level and everything like that. I just used one dragon to get my way through that whole map. Reason being that it is much faster to do it that way. In the short term, of course, you are going to probably struggle with elemental restricted fights a lot. So castle events will be difficult. But if you just power level a single dragon from 80 to level 100, like I did with Andy here, who has always been my god, my saviour, by the way, except for ceremony, our god, of course. But Andy on his own, before sigils were out, now it's super easy to clear the map with one dragon. But Andy on his own, he went through, he cleared the whole map, and then we had enough food to level up a second dragon to level 100 because of the extra that we were earning within, I think it was a couple of weeks, in which case that meant that we already had two dragons that were level 100, and then we were just working on our third, which was going to be whatever the other one was. I don't remember the order. Was it Andy and then... Yeah, it was Andy and then our Hermes dragon and then it was Saini is the order that, that I did it. Which meant I didn't actually have that many unique elements. But it did mean that we had maxed out dragons. And there are downsides, actually, to having fully maxed dragons. But the amount of resources that you earn extra every day, so from doing side quest map, map battles, so blue map fights, and just the amount that you earn from battles in general is a lot higher. It does also mean that after that you can go and clear heroic mode and then you're gonna basically quadruple the amount of resources that you have after you've done both maps. So I know that there's always this discussion and this I guess questioning between which method is better. Is it better to just level up a team evenly all the way up to 100 or just level up a solo dragon and take the short term hit that is by far the fastest strategy and it's not even close it is much much faster i'm thinking maybe i should upload a full video on this one day because there is so much misinformation that people sort of throw out there but I don't know, it's just I find it difficult to tell people to level up three dragons evenly just for events. Even though if you're logging in for every reset you should be able to finish castle events even with just one or two dragons. Because I did it for a good while. And I know that they've been making events more difficult. But I guess I'm hopeful that they're gonna stop doing that. Which is not usually the way that I play but, you know, at the same time, it's just, if you want to get more value out of the game and you want to progress quicker, 
it is better to just level up one dragon solo, finish the map, and then you'll have a second level 100 within probably a couple of weeks. Now, there is a lot of nuance to that, and like I said, there's downsides to doing it either way around. There's a lot of good reasons to level up three dragons or more. For example, you've got the dungeon, where having lots and lots of higher level or the same level dragons is really good for that. But then some people don't even play the dungeon. So you got to take everything to account into, in terms of how you play the game as a player. But for me, just wanting to finish off more things faster and get more things unlocked and get more food, that was the most important thing to me. So that's why just blazing through that map is most important. Honestly, now you can fully blaze through the map with one level 100 dragon not even fully enchanted because of how overpowered sigils are. And even though not everyone likes sigils, I think sigils were great for people that were trying to clear the map. So, despite how much I may dislike sigils for one reason or another, I think they'll always be a good addition because of what they allow on the map. But. I don't know why I went on such a long tangent today in terms of how to level up teams quicker because that is essentially what it comes down to and I have this conversation all the time and every single time it's like people have never really understood why people just level up one dragon because they're like oh, it doesn't make sense you won't be able to do events but again if you're gonna have a second level 100 not just one but you'll have two dragons at level 100 within a couple of weeks because you got to think about doing all of these fights and getting all of this bonus food and then you've got the farms going at the same time, you might have events going on that give you bonus food. It stacks up very quickly and you'll have two before you even know it. I did do that and it was all recorded so we can see that that is the case. It was just getting the third one took a while because then I was like, oh well I can do everything with two so why do I even need three? But I've never been someone to be super picky about the food or how often I collect from farms, that it's always spring cherries or squarey berries that you should be using. The one hour spring cherries are the most optimal food in the game, but that's only if you're collecting them frequently every hour. So if you don't want to be on the game every single hour at like the same time, just take squarey berries every six hours. It doesn't take a hell of a lot of effort. You get loads of food, it's the second best food for production, and then you should be good. As long as you're planting those, doing your daily side quest battles, I mean it's easier for me, obviously, because I've got high VIP so I can just instant win 40 fights a day, and then I can also use all of my energy to do the other fights that are up on the map, but these blue side quest battles are by far your best friend if you're trying to get lots of gold and get lots of food. It's like I never run out of gold, ever. It's like I'll go over to the dragon vault sometimes and I'll just go, boom, there's another vault slot because I have nothing to do with the amount of food that I have. I mean the amount of gold that I have. And food, it's just basically making more and more and more level 100 dragons at this point. <laughs> there's no real benefit to doing it apart from maybe help in the dungeon, but eh doesn't really give too much benefit so eventually you'll get to a point where you just have so many resources that you don't know what to do with them and that that's fine so um anyway i went on that god awfully long tangent as a result of homala how dare you um but i hope that that gives you some good food for thought if you are considering making a team maybe you got your first ancient Maybe you've just hatched it and you're not sure what to do with it. I hope that that helps out. And for anyone that's wondering about the best Ancient upgrade for, well, level 6 upgrades for Ancient, also depends on the situation. It's not just cut and dry, this is the best one like we get with a lot of others. I should probably actually make a separate guide for that because I said I would do it like a year ago. Whoops, or whenever Ancients came out. But... You know, it does depend on the situation, it depends on what you want to do with your team member, but I'm sure as you get to a higher level and you learn more things, you'll sort of understand the nuances to when it's better to do one over the other. But I mean, for me, I just upgrade a bunch of dragons to level 6. Why not? There's literally no reason not to. I have so many scrolls that I just waste them essentially. Look, let's go and spend this on Erlang Shen. Why not? <laughs> anyway, like I said, 
I'm gonna go for now. So we do have our horror dragon ready to hatch in about a day as well. So I look forward to doing that. I guess we'll take more of these pieces while we're here. But anyway, for now, best of luck. If you do need any more help with team comps, making things, putting things together, feel free to join our Discord and I should be able to, well, spend a lot of time guiding you in there like we usually do. But for now, I hope you have the best of luck and breed everything that you want this month or this week, just forever. Good luck.